Murphy School Board meeting its call to order. The first item on our agenda is adjustments to the agenda. I'm going to make two adjustments to the agenda. I'm going to move item 6C, which is a middle school building committee report by Paula Liberté under communications. And second, I'm going to move under new business 8A senior service report to follow the superintendent's report after A school volunteer program, Gail Schmader. Are there any other adjustments to the agenda? Seeing. Yes. Uh, we've taken that under consideration just shortly before the meeting started, and we feel that things will flow quite fast. Uh, the, the items between the ones that we have adjusted and those that, that will follow that one. Any other adjustments? Seeing none, we move on to approval of the school board minutes for the meeting of January 13, 1993. Are there any adjustments? revisions seeing none they stand we now move on to comments by the high school and middle school representatives we call on the high school representatives first good evening well um, in the high school there's much excitement um, with the seniors anyway because the graduation committee has um, just begun and they're making preparations um, for their June 18th graduation, which will be held at Fort Williams at 3 o'clock p.m. Um, caps and gowns and diplomas are in the office, so we're all busy chatting about that. We're very excited. Um, this week, um, to celebrate Valentine's Day, the junior class is offering carnations for a dollar, and they'll be giving out, given out during school time. And it's also to raise money for the junior senior prom which will be held at the Senesta on May 15th. Um, in order to increase the, um, the cooperation and the cohesion of the anticipated schedule change next year, um, various schools in the area who have 80 minute periods or longer periods than 42 minutes have extended invitations for um, members of our faculty and SAC to visit their schools and so tomorrow um, a number of students from the SAC as well as faculty members will be visiting Wells High School. Um, and the SAC chairperson, Laura Donnell, has um, written a letter to Yarmouth, who also has an 80 minute period system, asking if uh, we could do possibly a student exchange similar to the one that was done last year between Scarborough and Cape Elizabeth, where we get to observe them in their 80 minute um, period rotation and also to get some feedback from the students. So that's going very smoothly, and we're hoping that we'll get a reply from Yarmouth um, soon. But as I said before, tomorrow um, some students will be visiting Wells, so we're anxious to hear about their response. Uh, the speech team is looking forward to their state finals in a few weeks. They've, um, they should do well this year. In the past um, eight years, they've won eight consecutive state championships. And although the, the beginning of the season was shaky, they have come out on top in their, in their past meets. Um, states for debate will occur in late March, and they have also done very well in the past few weeks. Last uh, weekend, four of seven participants in Lexington, Massachusetts, Massachusetts placed, um, including two first places by Lucy Fowler and Megan Owens. Um, and at a meet in Gorham about four weeks ago, five students placed in both the Lincoln Douglas and the policy debate team categories. Um, the, and also in this debate, the Kate beat out Lexington, who is a normally very, very strong school to win the sweepstakes and being named the, the top school. So they've, they've both have been very strong over the se over the season. Thanks. Thank you very much, Courtney Min. We now call upon the middle school representatives. Chris, you couldn't be here tonight. We've begun our third quarter, and media report cards went home yesterday. Swim practices began last week, and the indoor track, which also just began, is only in its second year and already has close to 60 sixth through eighth graders participating. 
The Student Council has begun planning our annual magazine drive, which is tentatively scheduled for early March. We plan to emphasize school spirit as a reason participation, rather than individual prizes promoted in past years. Thank you very much, Jenna. We now move on to communications. Uh, defer to the superintendent. And I have um, one that I'd like to read, a uh, recommendation from Sherry Robinson, our um, Pine Cove li School librarian, uh, thanking H.B. Hoffman, the father of a first grade student in Miss, uh, Mrs. Mullen's class, who has devoted hours, adding up to really days, to the media center working on our IBM computer and the CD-ROM player so that the students can use the Atlas an encyclopedia in as user-friendly a manner as possible. Uh, as she points out, had we been paying him, we would have a serious three-figure bill. So I'd certainly like to, uh, in the name of the school board and uh, the entire staff at Pond Cove, thank you very much. Also included in your packet, a letter from Polly Ward indicating um, response to a note I'd sent her on our interest in the task force on year-round education. Um, that in fact uh, Keith Weatherby, our athletic director, has been invited to be a member of that task force and so we will have not only communication coming to us as that uh, group works through its uh, agenda but also of course a local representative and included in your packet a notification from the uh, MSBA board of directors uh, to uh, each school board group that the practice of appointing a legislative representative stands. I think uh, Chairman Greer has been a representative and I leave it up to you people as to how you want to handle that. Um, those are my communications. Is there someone who would like to serve as our legislative? Seeing none, I will continue and we'll send the form back. Thank you. And I have a, a memo here from the town clerk, Deborah Pizzo, um, and informing us of available seats for the next municipal election in May. We will have two town council positions open, those being served now by Irving Chappelle and Carl Pearson, and we will have two school board seats um, up for uh, three-year terms, Loretta Pond and Janice Solons. This is an announcement that she requests that we make. At this time, I'd like to call Paula Liberty, who is the chairman of the Middle School Building Committee, to come forth and give us a, um, essentially, a first report. Good evening. Mr. Chairman, uh, school board members, Superintendent Goldman, and fellow residents, <clears throat> I am pleased to be here this evening on behalf of the Middle School Building Committee to report on our progress. The committee first met on November 19, 1992, after briefly getting acquainted and armed with our copies of the excellent work produced by the Cape Elizabeth Schools Study Committee, we delved into the business at hand. The committee charge was reviewed and discussed, concluding that, first, the administrative structure previously approved by, by the school board would be the basis of the program that is K through 4 in the elementary school, 5 through 8 middle school, 9 through 12 high school, with a kindergarten physically lo located at the high school. Secondly, the committee needed to consider the entire school complex, in particular the Middle and Pond Cove schools, as they are located on one campus and have similar problems. <clears throat> Superintendent Goldman reviewed the various reports and offered a glimpse of the condition of the facilities and deficiencies in physical plant and space hindering our ability to foster our educational programs. We were all anxious to, to see firsthand the conditions and scheduled a tour on December 5th. In order to accomplish the goals of the committee, we concluded that an architect needed to be retained and the selection process should be undertaken immediately. We formally advertised for qualified architectural firms requesting receipt of proposals by December 15th. On December 5th, Connie directed a tour of the facilities. Although many of us had been in the buildings for school functions over the 
many year, over the years, we never paid serious attention to the physical plan. It became very apparent that the previous studies and decisions by the school board to investigate solutions for upgrading our schools is warranted. On December 17th, we reviewed the 14 proposals received from architects. The committee was impressed with their professionalism and qualifications. After establishing selection criteria, we reviewed all of the proposals. We shortlisted the following firms, Harriman Associates, Portland Design Team, Ray Associates, Stephen Morton Rosen Thompson, known as SMRT. We formally notified all firms of our decision and scheduled interviews with those selected. The architects made presentations to the full committee on January 14th. We had an opportunity to question each firm regarding their ability and qualification. <coughs> the criteria established for, for selection included similar project experience, ability and capability of the firm, use of consultants, grasp of the project, creativity, chemistry with the committee, and references previously checked by members of our committee. Given the qualification and excellent presentations, we quickly discovered that our task would not be easy. After length, lengthy discussion and consideration, I polled each member and determined that the firm of SMRT was the preferred architect. In the interest of assuring ourselves that SMRT would be the best selection, we decided to request a second interview with the principal personnel assigned to our project. SMR, SMRT made their pre second presentation on January 18th. This interview afforded the opportunity to have more interactive dial dialogue without the constraint of time. The team demonstrated an excellent working relationship, and a clear understanding of our goals and objectives. They have the depth of organization, an excellent track record in, in successfully completing complex projects, a thorough grasp of the project, and a staff that can listen and implement the owner's program. They appear to be extremely responsive to budget constraints and demonstrated a genuine interest in working with us. It was a unanimous vote to select SMRT. At our next meeting on February 3rd, we reviewed their proposal for services. As a result of our discussion and recommendations, I am pleased to inform you that the school department has entered into a contract with SMRT for planning and schematic design services. For renovations, modifications, and or additions to the Cape Elizabeth Middle School and Pond Cove Elementary School. This contract will carry us through referendum. The process will involve various scheduled meetings over the next three or four months to discern the needs, establish options, and prepare recommendations. We anticipate the architect to complete his study by June 1st. The committee is keenly aware of the need for community involvement to, ultim to ultimately propose an appropriate project that meets our educational program. Our committee is looking forward to the work ahead and providing the information necessary for you to decide on the best and most economically feasible solution to our current problems in our program. We have scheduled our first meeting with the architects this coming Thursday. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Um, just a comment that this committee is very ably served by an architect a builder and a lawyer and I think it it helped us served us well when we came to negotiating for contractual services for an architect and we thank those people who have volunteered thank you very much thank you we now move on to uh, the superintendent's report and the first is a school volunteer program thank presentation you. <clears throat> And I also want to add my thanks to um, Chairman Greers, to Paul individually, as well as that committee. It's an impressive committee. Um, we have a lot of work ahead of us. Um, the need is great, and the community will be hearing a lot more about it. Uh, one of the decisions we made in the budget process last year was to add a part-time school volunteer coordinator. And as I like to do with those kinds of budget decisions, I think it's important for the board to have updates 
how is it going, what are the, some of the ways in which that decision is playing out. So I talked to Gail uh, a few weeks ago about putting her on the February agenda, and she gave me a lot of material that I included in your packet, and she is here tonight to give you a highlight of some of her many activities, as you can see by the stand of the packet. Well, actually, I've renamed myself as Director of School Volunteer Services only because it seemed more appropriate to the job, so I made that decision to <laughs> rename myself. But um, initially, my focus has been to identify the existing school volunteer programs that are already in place, and these I've documented on the outline in your packet, um, and I've summarized on a chart that looks similar to this. Um, basically. I focused on how volunteers were recruited because that's step one to get volunteers into our system is to recruit them. So that was my method of organizing. Um, Pond Cove has a variety of ways of organize, of recruitment. Um, the Parents Association has two volunteer coordinators and their job is to focus on recruiting volunteers for school-wide projects such as health screening, kindergarten entry screening, and whatever comes up that would affect the whole school. Also, the Parents Association um, provides two parent coordinators who recruit room parents, and each classroom has a room parent, maybe two. Their function is to recruit volunteers for specific classroom projects, such as field trips, parties, classroom assistance, whatever comes up that's really um, germane to that particular classroom. In addition, the teachers do a large amount of recruiting on their own, and they recruit for a multifaceted approach to their curriculum. It involves things and clearly is not limited to the media center, the kindergarten guided reading program, individual screening, language arts, and the list goes on and on. I didn't attempt to identify each individual use because it's so varied. Um, also at Pond Cove is a big buddy program that is coordinated by the school guidance counselor and the school social worker and the high school prin uh, assistant principal. At the present time, there are 42 Pond Cove students that are being provided a mentor relationship by high school students. Um, that's increased over last year and it's a very impressive program. Um, to see the high school students come in with enthusiasm and to see the Pond Cove students meet their buddies with enthusiasm is very heartwarming. So that program is very alive and very well. Also the, app, the office staff recruits um, from time to time to help with attendance, computer, typing, whatever it needs to be. The middle school actually is pretty similar. They have a, pond, they have a parents association volunteer that recruits volunteers for school-wide programs and recruits room parents for each classroom. And that's a very well-organized program. It's working. Also, the teachers do the same kind of re uh, recruiting that the Pond Cove parents do, or Pond Cove parents, no, I don't mean that. I mean that the Pond Cove teachers do. Um, and there are several students in the middle school that also are serviced by the Big Buddy program. In the high school, um, the majority, actually, of the volunteer program is characterized by student-initiated volunteerism. And I got more and more interested in this as I looked at it closer and actually have become real involved in the senior service project. And we have two students here that will tell you about what's going on. Uh, so I won't spend time on that. There is also a newly formed council called the Student Voluntary Council. Uh, Joanna Johnson is heading that this year, and they focus on individual projects as they come up. They've had a re refugee resettlement project. They've had a Sweetser Home Holiday project. They are planning to go to the Viking Nursing Home to do a Valentine's Day project. Um, they basically have five or six core students that are involved. They expand as the interest is shown. Um, that's totally self-initiated from the student body. There is also um, a kindergarten classroom assistant program, so there are high school students volunteering in the kindergarten. Um, the match seems to be working very nicely from what I hear. Of course, the Big Buddy program, so there are 42 high school students 
that match to the 42 students at Pond Cove. Um, actually, as I added up how many students from the high school might be involved in volunteer projects, I got a, a minimum of 70, 72 students this year. And I thought that was pretty impressive. Uh, the teachers do a fair amount of recruiting on their own, and they use them for career fair, interview skills workshops, speakers, editing. The library relies on volunteers. All of those three focuses in the schools are in place. I didn't add to that in any way. As I looked at it, I realized that perhaps my function could be to expand the base of volunteers by reaching out into the community and making an informal partnership with the community so that we could have other people in addition to parents coming into our schools. Um, as I've done this, I've relied on specific volunteer opportunities that are advertised rather than going out and recruiting 199 volunteers and only having, say, 100 jobs for them to do. I don't want 99 unhappy volunteers. I would rather have a job for them to do. So that's the philosophy that I've worked upon, is that I have a specific opportunity. That opportunity is driven by a written job description by the faculty and staff, so that we're working in real specifics at this point. Um, how I've done that is to adopt a variety of means of recruiting these people. The, the piece I'm most excited about is the Cape Courier. We have an addition to their columns called the Cape Connection. It was initiated by the school system. Um, we run ads, so to speak, on a monthly basis that I solicit from the staff. Um, I'm proud to report that on the first publication, we had one response. And actually, it was a computer. Not a bad response. On the second publication, we had three responses. Um, the third publication came out a week ago. As of today, I've had my sixth response. So if it keeps moving in that direction, I think we've got something to be real proud of. And um, all of the volunteers that come from the community, I spend time interviewing. I don't like the word interviewing, at least chatting with, to find out what their real interest is, um, how can we provide a real solid match for that volunteer, how can we make it a real positive experience? And it's been a very rewarding experience for me. Um, I've loved it. And at this point, so far, I've placed a total of 21 community volunteers. Um, nine, let's see, 10 of those through the courier. Additionally, I've placed ads in the Parents Association newsletters, the three newsletters that come out on a monthly basis. I've had some response from that. Um, at the fall school open houses, I had literature. I had some response from that, as well as a fall volunteer fair at Unum. Um, not terrific response, but we at least made ourselves known. Two new areas will be um, access to the cable TV via their bulletin board, and we'll put a few broadcasts up on that on a monthly basis. And um, let's see, the other one is a community resource volunteer survey, which I've included in your packet. And that will be to solicit people who have hobbies, particular ex expertises that could help in the classroom as, in, as needed. So we'll have a resource base for that. Parents associations have started that. I'd really like to augment it with people other than just parents. Um, I guess as I, all of this came or is coming into place, I realized that there was a real need for procedures and guidelines. And I've included a thick packet of those for you. I'm not going to go through every one. Um, I would say probably the most important piece in my mind has been dealing with confidentiality issues. It hasn't been a problem before. I really don't ever want it to be a problem. But there's been some real um, training and talking with volunteers and having them sign a confidentiality statement. So that's been another focus that I've addressed. And I guess what I'd like to do is ask you if there are any questions, and especially if you have some suggestions. Loretta. I, I do have one suggestion, and it just happens to be a, a favorite of mine, and that's the Junior Great Books Program. And yeah. it seems as though, it, to my knowledge, the last few years that's sort of been dimming 
in importance in the system. And with you in place, and, and I actually want the administrators to hear my interest in this, I, I, I would like to see that rekindled. And, uh, and as I said, with you in place, it seems like it could, it could become an, an important part of our school system as it, as it once was five, six years ago. Thank you. That's a wonderful suggestion. And I think a, a, an area that we might want to look at is some training for volunteers right. because you can't teach junior That's grade true. books without the training. Thank you. What has been your response from the procedural things that you put in place from the volunteers, those who have volunteered over the years? That has it been Meaning. positive? You put in some procedural Right. Measures. I haven't heard anything negative. I've heard positive from the staff that there is now a system in which to work within. Um, to be honest with you, I, that would be a good area to solicit comments from, is from the volunteers to see how they're feeling about this procedure. Good idea. Most volunteer organizations such as hospital auxiliaries have some kind of format anyway, so a lot of these people volunteer not just in the schools, but outside mm -hmm. other volunteer organizations. So I'm sure they're used to procedure anyway. But it would be interesting to see what their feedback is to if it's helped them to focus and be aware. And that will be more important also as we start to focus on a handbook. And that will be another item that we need to address this year is to get a handbook together. Do you see a need in the future for some kind of a training program or orientation program? Or? Definitely. Yeah, I, I think it would be much easier. It would be, make my job easier, too, to do it all at once. Rosemary? I just had a comment about the handbook. I say this every chance I get it, <coughs> since it's before the fact this time. Um, just when you're looking at handbooks, could you perhaps consider a three-ring binder so that they're not outdated because one page is wrong. It's like two cents. Thank you. Uh, Loretta? Th this is just a hypothetical question. Uh, are you feeling like you have the time to, to handle the program? Right now, yes. I think actually um, it feels just perfect. It feels like a perfect fit at this point. Um, any shorter amount of time, I think we wouldn't be able to get the quality, especially as the interviewing increases. Um, I just feel very strongly that that's a real critical piece of having the program work for both the staff member and for the volunteer. Um, and in a way, it's been nice not to have an overwhelming amount of volunteers because it's given me time to focus on the procedure and guidelines. Thank you. Ian? I, I want to really applaud you for, for the work you've done here because mm -hmm. this must have been a tremendous job to get this all organized, to get these forms in place, and I know from volunteering in Pond Cove that really needed to be done. So I, I think you've done a fantastic job, and I'm glad to see you getting community members in, too. I think it's fantastic. Um, and you've said that you're going to be working on a handbook. What, what else do you foresee doing now that things have gotten organized and the handbook's done? What, what do you see um, your role is? Well, I see that. still a lot of pieces that need to be put into place around the whole training issue. Um, even faculty, not necessarily training how to use volunteers, but there's, there's some real skills in fine-tuning a job so it fits the type of person that the volunteer is, and it would just take a minor shift. And I'd really like to be able to give them some kind of information. And developing a training program for the volunteers working in the area of recognition, um, working in the area of evaluation as the year goes on. Um, I'm attending a workshop sponsored by MAPE in April to address policy. We realize that there's a big difference between policy and guidelines. So to really start putting some focus on policy. I can go on. No, that's good. OK. <laughs> Obviously, I have a handle on it. <laughs> Thanks. Great. Do you see the staff using you more as a conduit for finding specific needs or volunteer needs? or? Yes. I'd actually, um, as I send out these monthly requests, I find that more and more people are returning requests. And probably the focus has been on the middle school and the high school. 
as far as teachers turning in requests. I think because Pond Cove has such a rich source of volunteers right now. And that really excites me to know that these other schools are working in that arena. We've gone through t essentially two quarters now. Do you have any idea the number of volunteers that we've used so far? How did I know you were going to ask me? Oh, numbers of volunteers we used in the school. Have you so far? No, and actually I thought about that because I thought you might ask me that question. And I decided, shall I put a lot of energy into that so I will have an answer for the school board? Or shall I put my energy into developing procedure and wait until we do recognition when I'm really going to need to know who our volunteers are? So I went for the second option. So no, I don't have no, any No, that's fine. I just noticed that you also have a sign-in sign-in book with each building and that would give you some idea of the number of hours but and that will take a while for people to get used to um, we're really putting a focus at the kindergarten level so that as they come up through the system they'll be used to doing that it will take I would guess it would take a couple of years to get that well used it's a, tr a training piece any other comments we thank you very much. Oh, you did thank a you. Wonderful, it's been a, it's wonderful presentation. Thank, it's been very rich as far as the connections I've made with other communities, both nationally and within Maine. It's been a very rich experience for me, and I really thank you for that opportunity. Thanks. Uh, we will now move on to the senior service project proposal. I will defer to the superintendent. Thank you. I also want to. Thank Gail. Um, she and I have had a number of conversations, some of which I felt um, that you needed uh, direct uh, affirmation of what you've done. I think where you are right now is impressive for the fact that you've been doing it for uh, a half a year, and we look forward to seeing what happens. Thank you. Um, on the senior proposal, one of the things that <clears throat> Gail and I, a few months ago, I guess, or feels like a few months ago, maybe it was only a few weeks ago, uh, stopped by um, to try to lend, I was there to lend support, Gail, to work on the senior project and uh, although I didn't go to another meeting, I was aware that you were continuing to work on it um, and that I know that uh, Mr. Perry at, at uh, SAC Advisor and uh, many of the students uh, were taking a really active participation. I'm really delighted that we are here tonight with a proposal. I know that it seems to me for the last two years we've had earnest desires and, and, uh, and a hope that we could organize something and this is really shows a lot of work. Um, I don't know how much you want to explain or answer questions or what have you. I would just say in, in summary that this is a proposal uh, in the nature of a pilot experiment for seniors that would be releasing them from regular routines at the last uh, few weeks of school in order to do community service of some kind. Uh, what I applaud in this proposal particularly is the thought that's gone into how to make this a positive experience and to try to think through the kinds of things that would be a problem. Um, so with that much of an introduction, I'm not sure who's going to speak to this. Um, Um, hi, I'm Sarah Safer. Um, I'm a junior, and I'm the chairperson of the SAC Projects Committee. Um, as the Projects Committee, the first um, project that we chose to tackle was May Project. Um, we had seen Chevrus actually was the um, the project that sparked us, um, that sparked our interest. Um, and what I wanted to talk about, I know that you have a copy of our actual proposal, so I wanted to tell you a little bit about the process that led us um, to our actual proposal, because there's been a lot of work that's gone into it, a lot of time, um, and a lot of people have worked really hard. Um, originally, we decided to work on May projects at our SAC retreat, which was in October. Um, a little bit after that point, Brian Jem and Jason Oliviero talked to Mr. Miles um, and suggested the idea to him, and he was very supportive of it. Um, from there, what we did was we talked with some of Chevrolet's advisors, and we came up with a very rough plan modeled after Chevrolet's. Uh, we decided that we'd like to, um, at that point, that we wanted to go to the faculty, 
So we decided to talk to the department heads and get um, a very general idea of whether they would be supportive or not. So we met with the department heads and we found that they were 100% behind us. They had some questions and we realized that we would have a lot to go through, um, but that it was worth pursuing. From there, we expanded our committee um, to include some teachers and Mrs. Berman and Mr. Jewett and Mrs. St. John who weren't at the high school were all people that we talked to. Um, Mr. Jewett and Mrs. St. John are involved with Chavers' May Project. So working together, um, we brainstormed and came up with um, our goals and what exactly we wanted to achieve through the May Project. Um, from there, from like the rest of October into November was a matter of refining our proposal and having weekly meetings. Uh, Mr. Perry and I both met with Mr. Miles to keep the administration updated on what we were going through. Um, and at that point, Mrs. Schmader was, became very involved with what we were doing. Um, she went to a volunteer conference in Washington and brought back a lot of helpful information on a national scale about volunteer projects and how we'd want to approach it. So we went through more research um, and towards the end of November, um, I wrote a letter informing senior parents of what was going on to um, see if we could have any parent volunteers and the response was very positive from parents. Um, Nancy wrote a student survey and we had over 60 students who said that they'd be interested. Um, Jason and Brian started calling a list of 40 sites that we had received from Chevrus um, to make sure that they'd be able to accommodate a Cape Elizabeth May project on top of other projects that were going on. Um, and over 40 of those sites, I mean, out of 50, I'm sorry, over 40 of those sites um, said that they could accommodate at least a few people. Um, Mrs. Martin and Mrs. Wiley wrote up a faculty survey and the faculty, this was, we were planning on going to the faculty as a whole, but we wanted to have some kind of initial reaction from them. And that was also very positive. Um, we had been talking with Dr. Goldman a little bit because Mrs. McLaughlin made the connection there and Mrs. Schmader did also. So by the end um, of January, we came up with a working proposal, which is what you see now. Um, Mrs. Adds had sort of worked on the accountability aspects of that. Mrs. McLaughlin took on um, the parents and a lot of connections within talking to school board members, talking to parents. Um, Mrs. Martin Wiley talked to the teachers, and Mr. Perry and I worked with the administration. And Nancy was the student link, and Mrs. Schmader um, was working on preparing kids for the actual experience and talking with um, like the United Way and volunteer organizations. So at the end of January, we went to the faculty with our proposal and they unanimously supported it. So from there, we decided that the next step would be to let you know um, what was going on. So we're here and um, that's where we're at. And, and if you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. My name is Nancy Greenlaw and I'm a senior and I just have a little bit more information on this for you. Throughout our whole process, our focus as a group has been um, to, to, to get together a positive hands-on learning experience where kids will get, um, they'll do a two-week service project and they'll go out into our community and others and this will be a learning that will hopefully be more equally rewarding than a school experience. And it'll also be very different, but we think positive, as Dr. Goldman has already said. And to keep everybody informed on this, we're going to be sending out um, an article in the Cape Courier soon, keep the public up to date with that. And we'll also be sending home letters from the high school to the parents, and hopefully um, we'll still work on all the problems that we need to work out in this should work. Sure. Any questions, comments, Mark? I just have a comment. I really want to say how great I think it is that you've come up with not only the concept, but then after you developed the concept, spent a lot of time researching it, um, looking for as much information as you could to put together a good program, and then administratively approaching it uh, has all been handled in a very uh, professional manner, really. And uh, I think you've done a great job so far. It sounds like a great project. Rosemary? I, I would also like to commend the students um, and getting the uh, support of all the different groups in order to make this work. And I think if you can do that, you certainly can be successful in the project. So good luck. Thank you. Could you 
give us some ideas of what the type of projects that uh, students can be exposed to um, or being due? We've had, we've had a few teachers in the school system, in the middle school, and I think the Ponco school too, ask for volunteers. And that could be like, and we also, have, there's many things. Um, there's, um, I have a list, but mostly it's organizations in Portland. There's um, schools and the hospitals, Mercy and Maine Med, um, like the Epilepsy Center, um, the AIDS Coalition. Um, there, there's a giant list. I don't know. If, did we give that to you? No. No. Uh, we could give you a copy. I can't remember all of them off the top of my head. But, uh, That'd be great. I think what I think is very positive about this, this is a positive experience for students, but it also involves some parent observations of these students in, in these projects. And I think that's a very positive influence too. I think it's very positive that parents are also going to be involved in part of this project as, as evaluators of, their, of students actually doing, doing their, their performance of their project. And I think that's very positive. So it's involving parents and students in a very positive way. Well, I'd just like to say that, Sarah, when you were in fourth grade, <laughs> 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 the school improvement plan of Cape Elizabeth listed this as one of their highest priorities for, this, for the, uh, the uh, community, for the school community. And it's taken us that long to get this off the ground. And, and I really am proud of you all for doing it. It's, you should always be proud of it. Well, I'd just like to make one comment. I, I can't resist. Uh, I spent the last 18 months traveling around the country as part of a federal commission looking into ways to finance post-secondary education better. And very early on in that process, I became interested in the idea of community service. And at first, I was a lonely voice on the commission. But when we presented our report in a room much like this in the United States Senate last Wednesday, community service was right at the top of the list. The interest from the senators and the congressmen that were there was evident. There were two or three hundred members of the press. And everybody was talking about community service. And uh, I just want to echo what, uh, what Mark said. Uh, you, this has certainly been a very professional presentation. Every bit as good as the one I heard in Washington. <laughs> <laughs> we thank you very bo both very much, Sarah and Nancy. Uh, is there anyone from the public who would like to speak on this? Anyone from the staff, or advisors? I know David has been very involved. Um, just to thank all those who participated. It has been a, a multi-dimensional committee, which has been really nice, involving parents, staff, students. And I think that's, it's wonderful that we can do that to understand what all the different dynamics are of such a program, to get all those concerns out in the open in the way that um, this committee has tried to approach all different constituencies at different parts of this project. So we could be aware of the difficulties before we get into it. Um, it's a pilot project. We'll see how well it works this year. The faculty have been very, very supportive of, of it, given that they're going to be losing um, a certain number of students at the end of the year when there are some still still a few things that need to be taught before they, they run off to their next uh, plans uh, in the future. So it's been great, great cooperation all the way around. And we'll see how it goes this year. And un undoubtedly, we'll be before you with a report uh, next fall and perhaps some plans for the future. And to also rely on to the community that these students are also still responsible for what's going on in the classroom. So they still have to take the tests and, and provide the homework and that kind of thing. So it's, it's an added, not a really a burden, but it's an added responsibility. And it's, I think, a step to being an adult and going out on their own. And I think it's very positive. This is, yeah. I just wanted to say, since David brought up the future, that I hope we can entice some of these very public-minded young people to come back and maybe run for the school board here in Cape Elizabeth <laughs> someday. <laughs> it's, it's great to see you spending a lot of time when there are a lot of other distractions, um, wanting, you know, spending all the time to get involved in this. I think it's fantastic. So I, I think, as you can gather, you have full consensus of the board to proceed. Uh, this is not an action item is no. okay so you have a hundred percent from what I gather to go forward and we wish you success and I've already been approached to be a, a parent <laughs> evaluator so there are parents out there who are already uh, trying to, in, to
to involve other parents in this process. As a former English teacher, I was very glad to see you keep a journal and read a book. <laughs> that's terrific. Uh, you know, that's real integration of your uh, reflective practice and what you're learning. And, and, and frankly, I do hope sincerely that you will uh, have some time or spend some time this summer, perhaps, or a core group of you, so that we have some data, have some feedback, and then we can share. That will be valuable. Um, and you'll be busy in the fall with other things, or some of you will be anyway. So uh, we certainly would like, we'd just be interested in knowing how this went. Okay. We now move on to community dialogue follow-up discussions. And that's really basically at this point just a quick notice. I mentioned last month and I didn't want to um, uh, miss the opportunity. March 11th uh, is the confirmed date now, uh, time at uh, I don't know if it's 7 or 7.30. I'm sorry, I don't have it written down. 7, thank you. Um, we will be hosting a, a parent form. Actually, it will be uh, officially hosted by the Pond Cove Parent Association. And it will be a panel discussion um, on the learning gap. I mentioned this briefly, and I've mentioned it before, and I think there was an article in The Courier. Uh, I also want to thank Mary Bruns, who is uh, our certification person, also helping out with a variety of in-service uh, issues, and this is one thing that she's taking on, too, to organize. We really want to invite people there. It's an opportunity to talk about um, some of the comparisons between uh, American education, the assumptions that drive our, our thoughts about schooling, and to contrast them with um, a research study on Asian education. Uh, there is an article available in Thomas More Library from the Scientific American, and it is uh, it's much shorter to read than the book, so if, you, if you're interested and you like a little background, I would suggest that you check that out. Or you can call us and we'll try to get you a copy. That's basically what I want to say about that. Thank you. Thank you very much. We now move on to school board subcommittee and reports. Uh, the first is the finance subcommittee, our chairman, Rosemary Reed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm happy to report with approximately 60% of the year gone, approximately 60% of our revenues have been received and 60% spent. And with the notable exception of uh, operations and maintenance, which because of the temperatures and fuel, we're only slightly over budget, but by June that should even out. In our agenda today, besides reviewing the uh, financial statements and signing the school warrants, we also discussed the town council's approval last night of a short-term note that we're using <coughs> to pay over two years for some capital expenditures that were uh, purchased uh, modifications to the school, new lockers uh, for the uh, middle, I beg your pardon, for the fourth grade and changes uh, in the kindergarten wing at the high school. We reviewed the high school scholarship funds and the town's investment committee findings on how that money will be invested. We discussed the options for the uh, request for a new school bus for the 1992-93 budget year. And we received two reports from the hockey and the lacrosse boosters regarding their fundraising activities, their expenses, and uh, the fees in which they charge their players to participate in the sports. Any comment, question? Thank you very much. We now move on to the policy subcommittee and our chairman, Loretta Pond. Yes, the uh, policy subcommittee met last Wednesday morning at 9 o'clock or excuse me, 9.30, and, and discussed for three hours one policy issue uh, relating to placement of students in classrooms. And um, I think you each have a, a sort of a summary of, of the meeting. And uh, we continue to talk about this. We really reached no resolution. But this, if you'll read these, this three-page write-up that Connie has prepared for us, I think you'll get a, a very good idea of exactly the things that were talked about and discussed. I think if you read the summary, it might uh, right. <laughs> encapsulate your meeting. The policy subcommittee needs to continue to gather input as to any changes they wish to recommend in the current policy. 
The administrators will discuss this memo with staff and report back to the superintendent who will discuss with the subcommittee what possible changes are warranted. Thank you very much. I would just add to that, I certainly expect the board to have your own ideas. I was not really attempting to um, cut them off. I, however, was thinking of, from my own perspective about what we need to do in order to continue that discussion. I thought it was a very rich discussion. I realized I didn't get this done until about 11 o'clock last night, so you haven't had a chance to read it. I just distributed it to you. But I would appreciate, especially those of you who are there, um, including the administrators, uh, will be getting copy. Um, I felt that this was a, a reasonable summary. There were issues left out, issues I didn't cover, and I'd be very happy. It's on my computer, and I'd be happy to update it. I think it's a very important issue for us to put into perspective. Um, at this point, obviously, we're not, we didn't put a reading on the agenda for this because it's still at the discussion stage. Uh, we now move on to the Town Center Committee. Rosemary Reed is our representative. Uh, Mr. Chairman, because of the snow day last Monday, the Town Center Committee was uh, postponed and we'll be meeting on February 24th. Thank you very much. Uh, our next subcommittee is the calendar committee and I think that needs some explanation. Yeah, right, we don't have one yet. <laughs> uh, uh, but we will. Uh, this is an issue that uh, Ann Chapman and I have talked about several times this fall and now we're into the winter. Uh, every year we talk about calendar. It's uh, an issue that is basically a school board issue. The school board sets a calendar. But it's also an advice and consult issue with the uh, Teachers Association. And of course, it impacts many issues uh, that affect uh, all the staff in, um, from the aspect of workshops to the aspect of, uh, for instance, just exactly where we put the 180 days uh, for the school year. And uh, frankly, uh, some of the issues as raised by the possibility of year-round schooling the issue of uh, summer work, uh, the issue of um, looking at the calendar in different ways. Uh, seemed to us that it was, uh, if we could get started with the committee at this time of year and not wait until I put it on the agenda in April that we could perhaps get a handle on some of those. So that's why it's on here, just to frankly have the board authorize the establishment of a committee, which uh, my sense would be that we want a composition of uh, teachers, administration, school board members. Um, I think it would be wise to put an official representation from the association so that they're part of this. We don't have to want, we certainly don't want to have a group going and then all of a sudden send that to the association for the advice and consult. Um, I think we could have a limited number of meetings. I think we could sit down and set up when those meetings would be. And the charge would be to come back to the board no later than April with a recommendation because uh, my experience is it takes at least two months on the board agenda, sometimes more, to set the calendar. So that's basically my recommendation. I would entertain a motion. I guess I should do that. Um, I move that we establish a calendar committee. Do I have to say what it's composed of? Since Connie just uh, you can word that in your motion that we could leave it to the superintendent to to be composed of represent representative, representative groups. Uh, groups to be established by the superintendent. So That's fine. Second. Any discussion? Any discussion from the public? Can I, I just say one thing? Um, I think this is a good time to talk about this, not only because we have to do the calendar, but because I think some of these issues impact on budget issues too, mm. you know, how we do staff development and so I, th I think um, it's good to have these two discussions coordinated. That's it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. We now move on to unfinished business <coughs> and one I'm glad to see finally on our agenda and that is ratification of the teacher contract for the 1992-93 school year. And I'm going to yield to the chief negotiator, Peter Leslie. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, yeah, we're all pleased to see this on the uh, 
agenda. And uh, I'm sure we've all worked on a lot of complex and difficult issues in the last year. But personally, this is about the most complex that I worked on. And the, the principal characteristic of this, uh, this contract that uh, the public should, should know about is that it represents the semifinal uh, step away from our uh, career ladder. Uh, we've all commented in the past in various fora, uh, budget and, uh, and other, about the difficulties that we had with our career ladder. Uh, to some extent, we even had more difficulties in the transition away from the career ladder and back to a more traditional index. Uh, because when we started that process, we had some teachers who were on the career ladder, some teachers who were in transition on the career ladder, we had some traditional index teachers, and then we had some new teachers who were being hired. And uh, their pay scales were all somewhat different. Well, this year, I'm glad to say we began, we moved them a little bit closer, and we also took a, uh, a pretty large step <coughs> toward restoring an index which is fair and most important is beginning to be comparable with surrounding communities. Uh, another element of the, the contract is that in spite of the very sharp increases in uh, medical costs, uh, uh, which we are all experiencing. We have maintained the 82% uh, the coverage uh, for our teachers. Uh, we made a, uh, a very large effort this year, and I particularly want to recognize Rosemary Reed's efforts to uh, find a way to purchase health insurance more effectively and to involve each individual in uh, the management uh, and, and the, the paying for uh, his or her health insurance. We're going to have to do a lot more than we have done. We're going to have to continue that process. Uh, you can pick up any newspaper and read about it. Uh, but this year, we've, we've left it pretty much uh, uh, the way it was. Another uh, important element of this contract is that it establishes a new co-curricular and administrative fee schedule, uh, one which, uh, in our opinion, I think everybody's opinion, restores equity among the different schools uh, so that a teacher at Pond Cove doing something that's roughly equivalent to uh, something at the high school or the middle school uh, receives the same remuneration. Uh, it's a one-year contract, so in effect, we're going right back into negotiations for next year, and uh, we'll be dealing uh, with uh, these same subjects uh, almost immediately again. But at least we've done that this year, and I want to thank everybody uh, on all sides of the table that uh, participated in. It was a long process, and it was a tough one, and I think we're all glad it's over. I think we, we should approve it at this point because it's my understanding that the, the teachers have voted in favor of this contract and so I would move that the, uh, the school board approve this uh, uh, contract uh, as it is before you. Of course, the final clean copy will be slightly different and the page numbers will be slightly different. But uh, the red line copy that you have now really represents the final copy. Second. Second. Any discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor? 7 0. Um, the signing of the contract will take place with the association's president and myself at some time in the very near future. You know, we used to do that at school board meetings. That's true. Are you going to do that? Uh, well, I would like to have it signed before our next school board meeting. Oh, okay. But I think the teachers would like to have it signed so that it goes into effect. Um, we now move on to the Coalition of Essential Schools, and I will yield to the superintendent. The issue of the coalition has been the subject of at least three uh, workshops hosted by the school board and some uh, workshops hosted by the high school itself for parents and um, a number of faculty meetings. 
In addition, the two years previous to this year, um, because of a grant that the school received, I believe, uh, almost three years ago now, uh, but before I was a superintendent, so I'm not exactly sure when that was received. Um, there has been a growing interest in the part of the faculty uh, in just exactly what that would mean. Uh, I personally am very impressed uh, and feel very comfortable with coalition principles. Um, I frankly know some of the people who are involved in this effort, have known them for a number of years, respect their integrity, respect their um, genuine ability and interest to uh, ask thoughtful questions and to offer some kind of support for those community, communities, um, not only schools themselves, but the larger community uh, in which they reside. How do we really face up to what is going on and what the needs are for our children for the future? It is a difficult process. I've been involved with restructuring efforts in other sites, and I do know that there are uh, real difficulties in getting uh, parents, the community at large, as well as staff members, administration, and school board to come to the kind of consensus that the coalition asks us to do before we can say that we're truly committed. My personal views I've expressed uh, in the last workshop we had, I read a statement, that statement has been distributed to the faculty, I believe, uh, and certainly to the school board, to the administration. Um, and I feel that there has been a lot of progress made. I also can see um, an issue that uh, I think we have uh, more progress to make. Uh, my own issues are that I think we need to involve the faculty and uh, the parent community at the middle school and at Pond Cove. I see it as a systemic issue um, and one that I think we, uh, we really do need to work at. I was personally surprised um, at a workshop we had, and I think it was early December, at the parent opinions that were expressed. I had really thought that with the discussion that had been going on, both at the board level and at the school level, that there was more awareness in the community as to what the issues were. I thought that the workshop we had um, a couple of weeks ago, I forget the exact date, uh, indicated that in fact progress is being made because there were more parents there and the questions were extremely thoughtful and I also thought that they were uh, showing that people were hearing issues, processing them and thinking about what they meant. Um, I still believe that we have some work to do and I think that uh, in the spirit of respect and admiration for the effort that the high school staff has, has put into this, um, I certainly want to uh, take this opportunity not only to thank them for what they're doing uh, in the sense of a superintendent being aware of what staff does, but I also think you have my admiration. I do not think it is easy for uh, one group of teachers to tell a community that change is necessary, especially a community like this that tends to think change may be unsettling, unnerving, and counterproductive. I do not think the community yet agrees with the way in which the faculty sees it. I'm not sure where the board sits at this point. But I personally think that effort is valuable and it is part of the process of change and I think you've done a fine job. With that as an introduction, I know we have staff here who would like to speak and um, this is their time. I will open it up to the public, the staff and uh, public to make comments. I'd like to, to comment briefly. Um, it's my understanding that the board does not wish to vote formally tonight on the affiliation with the Coalition of Essential Schools because it believes that a consensus does not yet exist in the community for such an affiliation. Although I'm a little disappointed, I understand the board's decision. And as we move on, I, I want to briefly highlight some of the positive aspects of our relationship with the coalition. For those who may not be familiar with the Coalition of Essential Schools, it's a collaborative of some 400 schools throughout the country led by Ted Sizer, formerly the Phillips Andover Headmaster and before that the Dean of Harvard's Graduate School of Education. The coalition uses as its philosophical base nine common principles which also serve to guide those schools or districts in the coalition as they plan school renewal. The coalition is not a set of prepackaged program ideas or, or uh, classroom programs which one can implement, but rather it's a collaborative effort at school renewal and reform. 
In June of 1990, Cape Elizabeth High School received a grant from the United Parcel Service Foundation through the auspices of the coalition to begin working on improving our curriculum in two ways. First, we began to look at the outcomes of the curriculum and at what students could actually do when finished with a unit or a course instead of only how well they performed on a test. And second, we began to develop alternative forms of assessment which would indicate whether we were achieving the intended outcomes. This grant was a catalyst for change in the high school and I think very positive changes. It propelled us into the process of examining our curriculum in depth, a process that is not complete, but a process that has achieved its own momentum. Over the past two and a half years, we have been developing outcomes in all areas of instruction. This task is continuous as the outcomes are tested in courses and refined. Likewise, work on alternative assessment continues. New assessments in foreign language focusing on oral proficiency, the geometry projects in math, more research papers in social studies, English, chemistry, and environmental science, and oral presentation and defense of some of these research papers are illustrations of some of the work that has been done. The UPS grant through the coalition also increased our contact with other schools working on school curricular, excuse me, school and curricular reform. In each of the last three years, we were able to send groups of faculty to regional or national conferences and exchange ideas with other teachers in schools who were also struggling with school and curricular reform. During the past three summers, the UPS grant as well as grants from the Southern Maine Partnership at USM have enabled faculty members to attend workshops in institutes such as the Foxfire Project or an advanced biological workshop as well as to participate in local curriculum work on assessment. During the school year, we have had on-site support from staff of the coalition and the critical skills program at Antioch. We've also had the opportunities and funding to develop skills and acquire ideas from conferences and workshops sponsored by national and state professional organizations. We've also become part of the state and regional networks working on school renewal, for example, the relearning program sponsored jointly by the State Department of Education in Maine and the coalition and the Education Commission of the States. Because of these contacts and opportunities, a number of teachers have revised the way they teach and their students have responded enthusiastically to these changes. The UPS grant and our informal affiliation with the coalition have directly influenced all of these efforts and have encouraged us to enlarge our thinking about how our schools might change. It's interesting to those of us who work in schools that during the past decade, many businesses and industries have been forced to change the way they do business. There have been numerous books on business management that have proclaimed the need for change in business organizations and detailed just how many of these changes might, might occur. Indeed, in the February 7, 1993 Maine Sunday Telegram, there was a story on four Maine businesses who have undergone change, one of those being Unum. There are two <coughs> items on our national agenda, debt reform and health care reform, which are currently receiving much press coverage and national debate as they are two huge problems which we must solve nationally and on which we will individually have to change our behavior. Like business, like the national debt and health care, school reform is an equally large problem and one from which Cape Elizabeth is not immune. Yet schools are such personal institutions for us that we are reluctant to change them. There's uh, probably as much inertia in the school establishment against change as there is in the health care establishment. Both affect our families and our lives, yet the schools need to change. Our children's education needs more depth, more focus, more teaching children how to learn, more problem solving, and more practice. This is a sports-minded community. We do not turn out good teams and good athletes by having them listen to the coach talk. They practice every day, every week, on weekends, in summer clinics, and in off-season leagues. We cannot have championship schools without such practices on intellectual matters. That's why Ted Sizer, the founder of the Coalition of Essential Schools, has supported the metaphor of the teacher as coach and the student as worker. And the experiences of teachers and students who act on that metaphor illustrate its power and its applicability in our schools. We have had many faculty discussions stimulated by the coalition over the past three years, including the in-depth discussions on the common principles this fall. In the future, we will continue the dialogues with new friends and collaborators as best we can, and we will continue with the professional development as local funds afford. We will also continue to clarify the ideas of the coalition for ourselves, as illustrated in our work, and for the community. The board and the community 
have left us with a number of very good questions which will give us a good beginning point. I want to commend the, the high school faculty who put a great deal of time and effort into our work with the coalition and gave the coalition an overwhelming vote of support in late January. I want also to thank many parents and community members who came to public meetings we held on the coalition. Your questions and conversation with us were very stimulating and helpful. We in the high school will continue to keep enlarging our thinking about teaching and learning as the coalition encourages us all to do. We hope others in the community and other two schools in the district will join us. And I think a few of my colleagues in the high school faculty are here and want to share some of their ideas with you. Thank you, Fern. Anyone else? I'm Betsy Wiley and I teach English and um, I worked for Connie a long time before I knew any of you uh, because I was hired by the Falmouth School System to write a, what started to be a K through 12 and quickly became a K through 6 health curriculum um, because I could write and because I could work with volunteers but not because I knew anything about health um, and it had to be presented to the school board at the May meeting and we hustled that thing right through um, and what happened was that Probably half of the parents who served on the committee really believed in what we did, and maybe half of the teachers did, but they didn't all own it. And so when the whole thing was written, it got put in a file drawer somewhere along with most curricula that's written that way, and no one ever looked at it again. Um, so I completely endorse your hesitancy in hurrying into this. There, for my sake, not for yours, um, because there's no point in our joining something where the support is ephemeral and on paper. Um, a change like this means a change that, that gets parent support that's truly felt, um, that gets support through the whole system. But before we ended this discussion, and I don't think we've ended it, in fact, Joe Conroy said to me the other day, what are you going to do about this? I said, Joe, uh, it's not my job. Um, and, but then he pointed out, well, I'm not going to roll over and play dead just because somebody doesn't like what I want. Um, so I, I know you'll keep hearing about this as we go along, um, but I wanted you to know how um, exciting and affirming this year has been for me professionally. Because of these discussions, and not because of anything that's changed in my classroom, because I think most of the things that have changed in my classroom have changed out of some kind of natural evolution that's come, this is my ninth year teaching, and it's never been the same from year to year. Um, but the people you see here and the other people at school, including the people who voted against the coalition, have been involved in a, a deep discussion of what education means and why we're doing it. Um, the most essential questions that involve the whole purpose of our job. And ironically, it's something we never talk about. Uh, we talk about smoking in the bathroom and is there a problem with jump, gum chewing in class? And we never get to these issues what should kids know and how will we know they know it um, and that discussion alone I think has moved the high school um, ahead more than it's ever moved in a one year in the time I've been here uh, and I thought before you left this discussion or at least took a break from it for a while um, you should know that because there has been a tremendous contribution made to the school by the coalition even if we never join simply by allowing us to discuss issues that mean everything to us and to the students we teach. Thank you. Thank you very much. Would anyone else like to speak? My name is David Peary. I teach French at the high school. Um, Mrs. Wiley was most eloquent, and she stole my thunder. Um, <laughs> the problem, one problem with educational institutions, especially at the level we are at, that's the only one I know, so that's what I'll speak on, is that um, we teach in departments, but departments are really compartments. We go into foreign languages, we go into English, we go into social studies, and we get lost there. And I will speak with my colleagues, but I never have an opportunity to speak with other people within the school. And something that has been very invigorating for me through these discussions, through this umbrella that has been provided to us through the coalition, is to look at how can we make learning more significant for our students. And being able to have those discussions with my colleagues has been really wonderful and has been renewing for me. Now I know what's happening in science. Now I know what's happening in mathematics. And when we're all going in the same direction, I think we're far more successful. Um, I was thinking a little bit, sort of like the words of 
of our famous forefather said either we all hang together or surely we will hang individually. And that's what happens in teaching. If we all go out on our own, we will not be nearly as successful as we can be if we're all working together. And these discussions have allowed us to start to work together. I look forward to continuing these discussions. It became very evident that the ideas of the coalition um, cannot be implemented solely in the high school. Um, one august authority said that these are the same principles that are being applied in middle schools. And another august authority, my wife said, who was a, an elementary school teacher, that said, looked at the principles and said, well, this is just good elementary school education. So I think something that has to take place is that this discussion needs to be broadened, and I look forward to having this discussion. I sh I'm sure my colleagues are all looking forward to more meetings um, at the elementary level and at the middle school level and with um, the community in general so that we are all pushing in the same direction and we're all going the same way. We may not all step on the same blades of grass in this, in this route, but we'll surely walk the same path and I think, think we'll be more successful in the end. Thank you very much. Anyone else in the public? Randy Ray, Social Studies. Uh, I don't know why David ended up being lost in social studies when he went through his departments. <laughs> we don't get lost in social studies. Uh, I, I'm not going to be as long or as eloquent as uh, my predecessors, uh, but I know that you've all put a lot of time in, as we have, in looking at the ideas and talking about these um, situations. And I, I think if there's one thing I'd like to leave everybody with, is that we recognize that if you stand still, you fall behind and that these discussions and the time and the effort that we're putting in are necessary and that we hope that we can gain something in the whole process of how we can help our students to learn better. And we're all here for the same purpose and, I, and that's important to know too. We all want the students of this community to do a better job, to be better students, to learn more. And uh, I thank you for your time. It's been frustrating at times for all of us. <laughs> I've had some good conversations with some of you privately and I appreciate the candor and the, the process. So I hope we can go on from here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening. I'm Sam Boothby. I'm a mathematics teacher at the high school. Uh, what do I like about the coalition? Uh, it's, it's not a program. It's not like buying software to run your grading program or your bookkeeping program. It doesn't cost anything. The only costs in the uh, coalition are those costs that you impose upon yourself as you uh, work towards school reform. Uh, it's a focus. Uh, other people before me have mentioned the, the things that we want to focus on, the, the principles of the coalition and making it a systemic uh, network. It is a network of hundreds of teachers, educators throughout the country who are all working toward school reform like our Southern Maine partnership that many of us work with. This coalition does require an outline for school change, which we've really got to do anyway. Some people wonder, why would we change our school? We're doing a good job now, aren't we? The kids that we graduate go to the schools that they want to go to, and they're successful. Over the past 27 years that I've been here at Cape Elizabeth, uh, we have concentrated on teaching the three R's. And we've done a pretty good job of it. And it's been easy to tell how well we do, because we can give a test and we can say, yeah, we did a nice job. I think we've got to reform the way we teach. Rather than teaching the three R's, we've got to teach reading for understanding, thinking to solve problems, and communicating to transmit ideas. These things are not nearly as easy to teach and a lot more difficult to measure. We here at Cape Elizabeth have the danger of becoming a factory where as each student comes to their teacher, the teacher puts the appropriate stamp on, and when they get to the end of the line, you put your stamp on and we send them out to the world. I don't think we can continue to do that. I think we've got to, uh, as I said, reform the way we teach. We also need to 
teach students to take care of themselves and their bodies and their minds so that they can do those things which will be of value to them and to their society when they get through. I hope we can continue to work with you and with the community and help you understand how we feel and come up with a plan for school reform. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else from the community? I'm Patricia Monterio, and I teach chemistry at the high school. Um, what I want to say is, is really why I voted for joining the coalition. And I read about the coalition. I went to workshops that the co I went to a long workshop the coalition put on. Um, I attended all the meetings about the coalition this year. I've been teaching for three and a half years, and that's given me some experience about why I think I want to join the coalition. But the most important aspect for me has been my experience as an engineer. That's why I feel the coalition is valuable for me, mostly. Um, I see that students need to be able to go beyond just, a, just knowing a bit of knowledge here and there, they, of course. They need to be able to apply it. They need to be able to think. They need to be able to solve problems that I can't imagine. And to teach them that is, is really requires something more than maybe the way we've all been taught. And I'm learning that this time. And the coalition for me is um, a tool to help me to teach them to think and do those things so that they can be prepared when they go into the workforce. Whether it's as a, and I'm thinking, you know, from my experience as a scientist and an engineer. So that's where, that's where my decision has been, is really to move them to a different level of learning from just memorization of facts and science to really being able to apply it. And, you know, I need help to be able to do that. So that's, that's really why I wanted us to join the coalition, so that you know that. Thank you very much. Anyone else in the public that would like to comment on the coalition? Seeing none, I will ask my fellow board members if anyone would like to comment. Jan? Yes, thanks. Um, when I first started reading Sizer's books about four or five years ago, I liked so much of what he said. It made sense. And I thought that any high school that could use these principles would be very lucky and probably graduate well-educated students. And I still think that the discussion should go on and we should explore joining the coalition. But one thought that I want to throw out is that in some ways I wonder if we have evolved past the stage where we need to join the coalition simply because of what you've expressed. I, I see we have a very bright and capable high school staff, and we also have a wonderful mission statement and some real good goals that I, I would love to see all of you work together to come up with your own plan for using that mission statement and the goals. And I, I realize somehow you have to be able to network, and I don't know how that would all fit in or as far as getting grant money. But I really would like to see you take what we've developed and start at the 12th grade, as, as Connie has talked about before, um, talking about goals in, in each subject and going backward, clear down to kindergarten and see what can be developed. Because I've heard you speak at other meetings and I know that you have wonderful ideas that I, I'd really like to see you be able to fully explore. Anyone else? Peter? Yeah, I'm in favor of our joining the coalition, uh, but I have a couple of questions. Uh, I, I'm convinced that it, uh, it works at uh, Phillips Andover, where you know, Mr. Sizer was the headmaster, because that's a self-selected, uh, virtually one ability level school. 
So we have a much broader spectrum of students and ability levels, and I would just like to hear more discussion uh, as to how we would make the coalition principles work across that wider spectrum. Uh, the other question that I have is one that I brought up before, and that is that uh, I would have to hear some more about the cost. I know we're roughly at the 80 to 1 ratio overall, but are we really, if we were to smooth out our 80 to 1 over the teachers we have, uh, the numbers that I've looked at just in passing would indicate that some, uh, depending on the department, depending on the teacher, the load is different. So uh, is there any other cost? Uh, is there a cost beyond just the 80 to 1 ratio? Because I frankly don't think we're going to be able to afford anything. So we have to, I would have to be convinced that we can do it with uh, our present resources. Uh, I would reiterate what uh, David said, and I think I also said at the uh, last workshop we had. I think these are essentially the principles that we looked at when we moved to the middle school system a few years ago. and. Uh, the elementary school, I think, is using a lot of the same principles. So I think we're already there in a lot of our system. So why not uh, extend it to the high school? I think that, uh, again, I just want to uh, uh, say that I think Betsy is absolutely right uh, in, in recalling her experience with, uh, in Falmouth. And that is everybody's got to be on board. We've got to take the requisite time to either get everybody on board or not get everybody on board. And if that takes us a few more months or even another year, we just have to do it because it surely will fail if there's not near unanimity. Anyway, I'm all for it. Keep up the good work. Ann. I'm, I'm going to say what I said at the last workshop, and that is that what I hear from the teachers time and time and time again is what they really want is staff development and time and uh, opportunity to develop their craft and improve their craft. And I think we ought to do whatever we can to uh, enable teachers to do that. However, you know, I'm not sure we have to sign on to, you know, any one particular program to do that. I think the uh, what's What's nice about that is that you have the possibility of getting grant money and things like that, but I think maybe we should just work on being a little more creative uh, about how we fund it. And I think even this calendar committee is one way of doing it, just exploring what our staff development needs really are. We hear a lot. Um, I know as a board member, I feel like I hear a lot that teachers need staff development, but very rarely do we see it fleshed out in the budget or in, in any other way. And I would like to see that at all three schools. And I'm also just going to be really blunt about <laughs> the coalition um, and how it has been presented to the board. Um, I've, t I've talked to a lot of the teachers um, in some depth, and I don't doubt their um, enthusiasm and commitment to these ideas. I think it's laudable and it's exciting what they're doing in their classrooms. I think what has been lacking here um, is any real leadership in bringing us a plan to vote on. Um, some of the very basic questions that we've asked and that community members have asked time and time again over the course of a year or so are still not being answered, and that is how much it costs, um, where and where is the action plan, um, so that we can explain to people what this will really look like in the classrooms. So I know, you know, there's been some talk that the board is just not behind this or, or the community just won't get behind it. I know the faculty feels like they're pretty far ahead on this, but frankly, um, I don't feel like we've been given that very basic information that the coalition itself requests in order for you to apply. So. Rosemary. Yes. Um, I would also uh, like to agree with Peter and Ian on two different points. One, that we need to know how much it costs and we won't have any money. And then with Ian, that however, if you ask for staff development money, I certainly would put it as one of the priorities. I believe very strongly in staff development, common planning time. 
uh, time for which teachers can talk to each other about the subjects that they're teaching and disciplinary uh, approach to education is very important. I think we need to study that, we need to try it, we need to make mistakes, we need to find ways to fix the mistakes, and we need to be able to admit that something is uh, not right and be able to make the, the changes. One of the things that um, comes to mind is we have made a few changes in Cape Elizabeth in education, or at least the way it's perceived. It may not be in the high school. Uh, the school board is now seven members. Uh, it used to be five. Uh, we have subcommittees now. We used to be a committee of the whole. We've changed the size and the uh, grade levels at the middle school in Pond Cove, I think, three times. Uh, we have uh, a broader access to education. Uh, we have a new superintendent compared to the old superintendent, I guess. Uh, we have a different superintendent. Um, I would say that the, the coalition of essential schools is very, uh, very worth considering. It certainly has merit and who can argue with the nine principles. However, what is very obvious to me is that some people will not only benefit but excel, others will not. I have seen nothing that would suggest how we would deal with those students who do not do well or the faculty who does not do well. Also, uh, with Peter and Mark and a few other people I've asked repeatedly about the cost, the cost to me is not just the numeric cost of adding staff when ratios get out of line. Um, there are other hidden costs which I would like to uh, have exposed. I would like to quote from a four-page article that, was, uh, that I read over the weekend. Uh, it's specifically dealing with a five-year evaluation of the Coalition of Essential Schools. The part I'd like to read, though, has to do with reform in general. I quote, in addition to the concerns that current economic uncertainties add to any discussion for change, our evidence suggests that even when there seems to be consensus that change is needed, and even when dedicated, well-intentioned people are trying to bring it about, issues and problems often unanticipated arise that threaten and impede the progress, the process, almost from its inception. I would hope that when we know that problems could exist, that we always proceed with caution and work them out before we do something as critical as joining uh, a major reform effort. Um, the commercials, you know, say just do it, and I understand that it's important to note that some of the things that we are doing, we can do better, not necessarily that they're wrong, but improvement is uh, part of the plan. I would definitely like to see that uh, discussed and be part of that discussion and listen, uh, but I just cannot support at this time what I consider uh, undocumented results of the 400 schools that have been uh, using the coalition and I'm <coughs> concerned again uh, with all the changes that we are dealing with in Cape Elizabeth that the timing is not right for the coalition right now. Loretta? I, I just have one sort of small thing to say. Uh, it has to do with the realities of going to college and how that fits into the coalition. The gentleman whose name escapes me that, that talked at the December meeting said that, that if the testing of coalition schools was not as high as it was before they joined the coalition, then something was wrong. Uh, and the realities are that if you go to college, you, you take SAT tests. And, and if you, in most or many colleges, you take three achievement tests. And it, would, I, it seems like it would be simple to go to some of these 400 coalition schools, maybe 10 at random, and say, you, how many years have you been in the coalition? Five years. How have you done these five years on your national testing? How did you do before, the five years before? I, I would think that information, we could get that information, and I think that would really calm a lot of high school parents, because they, they know no matter how broad you've learned something and how well you're able to get up and explain it and how well you can do a research paper and how well you can get up and tell people what you wrote. That's wonderful and it's really what life is about. But unfortunately, the testing hasn't caught up with that yet. 
it's still a, a pretty much black and white situation. You take SATs, if you score above X, then you get in schools above X. And, uh, and, and I am convinced that possibly, well, I'm convinced possibly, that I, I think possibly that the coalition maybe tests better than schools that aren't in the coalition. And it seems like it would be easy to find that out if someone would just, either our guidance or our principal or a committee would find out how did the coalitions do, how did the coalition schools do on, on national testing versus a more traditional high school. And I think if we had that information and it was positive information, you'd have a lot of people on your side. And the second thing I'm concerned about is the question I ask in December, which is what happens to the people who are not on board? And the answer I received then was those people usually move on. And I didn't like that answer. I'd like to think that there's another way we could be more supportive of our people who perhaps have their own um, ideas about what good education is, or at least some, some training that would, would, uh, would help in that. I was very, um, interested that such a high percentage were in favor of the coalition. I was surprised. I thought it would probably be about 50-50, but it was certainly overwhelming, and, I, and I, I'm glad that you all are together. Mark. Many of the uh, concerns that have already been voiced were mentioned at earlier meetings, and I, as, listening, as I was listening to them, many of which I agree with, I realized that they do have something in common, and that is that the, the nine principles are to some extent rather nebulous in, in how they may be interpreted. And I think that what many members of the community were concerned about is they didn't understand how those would be translated into real concrete changes at the school. Uh, and then they were also having a difficult time sorting out two different messages. The first one was that drastic reform is needed in education and we think the coalition of schools may be the answer to help helping address that drastic needed in change. And then the second answer was it's not a prepackaged program, which it's not. Um, and it's, it's just sort of a, dire a, a direction or something that we're going to slowly change for the school. So that on the one hand they hear that the, the need that is being met is a drastic change but it, when they look at it in terms of trying to understand a defined change in the school system, there's nothing that they can really put their fingers on. So I think a lot of the concerns raised by the board on several occasions perhaps is an effort to have a more concrete understanding of how our school system would interpret the essential um, nine principles described with, by the coalition. I think that our responses have been very much like, you know, it was described, it's just good elementary education. And I would agree with it. They're, they're good principles. But how is, are those going to be put in place so that it's a drastic change or it's a, a very significant reform for education? And that's the piece that I, I would need to feel more comfortable about. I think what's positive that's, that's, that has started, and that's, that's the way I'm going to put it, is that there is a conversation on collegiality that has started at the high school. And that is something that wasn't there when I came on the board three and a half years ago. And that's very positive. It's a democratic process, so there have been minorities and majorities, and I know there has been a lot of discussion. But I think it's very positive. I think when Connie came on board as our superintendent, one of the things that was missing was a sense of a system-wide approach to almost everything that was going on in our school system. We were working as essentially four independent entities within the system. We had a central office, we had an elementary school, we had a middle school, and we had a high school. I think what has started to evolve in the last two years is a, a real striving towards a system-wide approach to everything that we do and, and really looking at everything from a system-wide approach, whether it's curriculum, whether it's maintenance, whether it's um, support, and, and I think that's the way we have to go. Uh, Frank alluded to how business is looking at change and he mentioned Unum. And one of those things that they're looking at is, is their system 
and they're looking at how the employees become part of system change, and that's quality management. Uh, I think you have to empower both the staff and the students and the community in a partnership. And I think we started that. We started that a year ago when we were looking for a mission statement. And that was the initial dialogue. And I think what we found was that our mission statement pretty much matches a lot of what the Coalition Nine principles are. And to some degree, we're, we, we already are, are at some of those uh, objectives. What I what I got out of attending last fall's coalition meeting was a sense of excitement. And, and, and not so much a program change, but just people looking at different ways of, of delivering education, to make education exciting and, and to involve kids more in their education process. And I found that very exciting. Very exciting because when you're with 1,700 people in one big room, and you hear and feel that sense of excitement, that's what I want to see happen in this system, system-wide, not just what's going on in the high school. And I know dialogues are going on in the elementary school and dialogues are going on in the middle school, but what we need to do is now start dialoguing amongst the three schools. Last Wednesday, Connie and I were invited to attend the high school's committee on instruction and, and I think to some degree kind of explain where the board felt, where the board felt the community was, and and um, and to kind of give a little overview of our impression of the two workshops that we've had, and and I think we both said that we don't feel that the three entities that need to be there for consensus to join something like this were there. The high school is there. I think to some degree you've got part of the board there, but I don't think you have the community, and you need all three entities. What I really want to see is that we support our staff with some kind of affiliation, with some kind of networking, so that people are constantly exposed to different ways of teaching, uh, just dialoguing. And, I, and I, want to, I want to even create within our own system, whether it's through staff development, that we start dialoguing among schools. So that when a kindergartner starts in the system, and graduates from the system, that there is an action plan for that child all the way through. And to some degree, I think that's, that's a portfolio on each child that starts in kindergarten. And when that child graduates from this school, he can see his own progress in, in what he has produced. And to me, that's a form of exhibition. It's a 13-year exhibition. I know the state of Maine is aligned with the coalition as, as one of those state, state schools that's <coughs> looking at change. And, and I think that through the, the Southern Maine partnership, I think that we will see more of, of that kind of interaction. And I see our, our system becoming more and more involved. So as long as I'm on this board, I would continue to support any kind of dialogue for a consensus of improving how we educate our kids. And I don't see this as, as, that's why I really was opposed to taking a vote at this time. Because I don't want to stop the momentum of what has been started. And that's why I, you know, I really have pushed that we not take a vote, because I want that momentum to continue. And we thank you very much for what you've done and hope you continue on. I guess we move on to another agenda item. We look at a second reading of a policy. Uh, that is the policy um, that we read last month. Looking for my copy here. A selection of instructional library materials as we went through it last month. Uh, essentially, the point is to make sure that the process and procedure we have for library materials uh, is umbrella to um, be appropriate for any challenges or questions we might have on uses of materials and the regular instructional program. Uh, my understanding was that the policy as worded was acceptable. I have not revised it since last meeting. 
Any comment on the policy? Um, I'll entertain any comments of the public if anyone wants to comment. Um, entertain a motion. Loretta? Move that we accept the uh, instructional library materials policy. And that is file um, IIA. IIA, yes. A second? Rosemary? Any further discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. Okay, discussion and action on Pond Cove lockers. Well, that's a real short item. <laughs> it was on the agenda because, in fact, uh, I had discussed the borrowing issue with the town manager, and he had felt that we had made some changes from what we had discussed during the budget process. Um, we discussed the fact that those were not really substantive. We had kind of substituted apples for apples. Um, and he actually took it to the council yesterday. I went to the council, they approved it, so um, I had originally thought we were going to have to take a separate vote on uh, expanding the locker, so actually it's really basically a done deal. We don't have to vote on it. Uh, this was the um, expansion of the number of lockers we originally um, tagged for purchase in the uh, budget, which was a sub uh, subject of borrowing. The lockers that we purchased we used at the fourth grade, formerly the kindergarten wing, and thought we would continue that process with budgeting, uh, for instance, in the 94 budget. Uh, the fire chief has informed me that we must put them in ASAP, and so that's what we're going to do, and uh, we may even in that process be able to alleviate some of the other storage issues that we were talking about. Just as a sidebar to the discussion of last month's uh, fire chief report, uh, we have really started in on the uh, plan for getting um, some of the material that is stored in those areas that I mentioned in the high school that need to be taken out. We'll keep you updated on that one also. Thanks so very much. Um, just one comment on the Pond Cove lockers. Um, that is a major purchase and it is a purchase that we can integrate if we undertake any kind of rehabilitation right. of those buildings, so it's not a permanent. Well, we haven't wasted our money. They can no. be taken off and put back again. You know, yeah. It's something that we would need even in a new facility or a renovated facility. That's correct. We now move on to new business, and the first is a personnel request. Okay. Um, I have three items that are not vote items but information items. I would like to formally uh, welcome Dan Reed and I am definitely going to remember that this is not R-E-I-D, no relation with school board member Rosemary Reed, um, R-E-E-D, Dan Reed who uh, has joined us as our new maintenance director. Um, he has a broad background in construction related in some code related um, activities. Um, he was the, our pick out of 56 applicants. Um, the interview team consisted of administrators um, as well as um, uh, we had the board member present, myself. And uh, when we went through the second round of interviews, we also took the candidates into both the middle school and Pond Cove and sort of pointed a few things out and stood back to see how they were uh, analyzed. So he uh, survived all of that and uh, we are wel welcoming him aboard uh, as is our general policy when this is a non-certified person. Uh, we do not, I do not ask the board to vote on it but I inform you and uh, if you have any questions I'd be happy to answer them. Moving on. We have two long-term subs. Uh, again they're not, uh, since it's less than half a year now we're into the second semester. Uh, the practice is to bring them to the board for a vote item if it is a semester or more. If it is less, they're long-term subs. But I thought I would inform you, we have, you may recall, you granted a leave to Rebecca Wing. I think she's going to help Tibet. me. Tibet. Hmm? Tibet. <coughs> Tibet, Himalayas, anyway, far away. And Tom Snow will be taking her yeah. place. And um, that leads me to uh, the next section, which are the leaves of absence. And I have a leave of absence to uh, inform you of Laura Giverts, high school photography, uh, family 
uh, has moved and uh, she is requesting a leave of absence for the rest of the school year. Uh, she will be notifying us early in, um, well, by the end of the school year in June as to what her plans would be for next year. Um, I recommend that you grant her that um, status of leave of absence from now to the end of the school year. She will be replaced by uh, Peter Schellenberger as a long-term sub. Again, you don't have to vote on Peter, but you would be voting on granting that leave of absence for the rest of the school year. Also under leaves of absence, uh, you may recall about this time last year, we were trying to straighten out how we would handle part-time uh, employees, and I think we have it pretty well organized now. We have three of them here. Uh, Deborah Jordan Pearson, who uh, is a teacher on full-time contract who has been requesting uh, and it continues to request this year a half-time assignment. Um, Ingrid Stressinger in the same situation, requesting another year of half-time leave of absence. And the third situation, Kelly Manahan, who last year asked for full-time leave of absence for child care would like to do that again this year, notifying us that she would be interested in taking a half-time position were one available. The fact of the matter is that the way these things are set up, we grant her the leave of absence, noting that she would be available, but we are not in a position of promising her um, that and she understands that. Uh, and then just to finish out the personnel issues, uh, change in employment status, this again is not a vote issue, but just to let you know about it, uh, Deb Cross, who has been working from halftime, has requested to activate her full-time status. We'll be going back to full-time in the fifth grade next year. Uh, I have heard from Janet Nesson, uh, and she is returning to Maine, and will be coming back to us next year. Um, I think the whole family is moving, as I understand it. And Marie Hayes, just to remind you, was on a year's leave of absence, and she has notified us also that she is returning. So the vote items are, the request of Laura Giverts for uh, a leave of absence for the, from uh, beginning with uh, February vacation uh, for the rest of the school year. Um, the halftime status for Deborah Jordan Pearson and Ingrid Stressinger, Kelly Manahan, another year of child care. I entertain a motion. Can, you I, want to, can I just okay, ask yeah. a question first? Is there a deadline by which these halftime teachers have to tell us if they want to continue halftime? I mean, I know there are other people who are on halftime. I think we got them there. all. Is there somebody that we neglected to? Because we were trying to make sure that we contacted everybody. Leslie Nolan isn't halftime. She is halftime only and never has been full time. Oh, she, okay. Okay. Those people who have only been hired as halftime people are under no obligation to notify us because that's the status under which they were hired. Part-time people are hired as part-time people. Yes. Okay. Anybody else? I'll entertain a motion now. I shall move. I'll allow that. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> Nobody can remember. Okay, I'll try. Laura Gilbert's leave of absence for Congress. All right, Janet Nesson, that doesn't require no, a motion. That doesn't require a vote. Janet Manahan. You can make the motion. <laughs> you want me to clarify Ingrid, the motion? Ingrid Stressinger and Kelly Manahan. That's right. I was going to get there, Charles. Does anybody second that motion? Does anybody <laughs> understand it? I know what it is. Yeah, I'll I, second it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jan. You're Any fine. further discussion? All those in favor? Seven zero. Okay. okay. Nominations for coaching positions for 92-93 school year. And we have two. Indoor track at the middle school, Lisa Petroselli, and indoor track at the middle school, uh, Scott Hendry. Now, I don't have any notations on those, but I think one of those is a B team. Where's Nancy? I, I think you're just sharing it. I don't know. Okay. That, all right, then that's... It's a girls and a boys. Rose, it's a girls and a boys. And it's 6 eight. Thank you. And the middle school representatives already told us that they have 60, isn't it 60 participants? I think that's what she said. Yeah. Which was about what they had last year, which was the first year that we approved funding. 
Um, in fact, last year we had volunteer coaches. Rosemary. Mr. Chairman, I move acceptance of the additional coaching positions for the 92-93 school year, dated February 2nd, uh, 9th, 1993. Do we hear a second? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Okay, between the time we leave here and we meet again in March, I'm going to announce some budget workshops which will take place on Tuesday, February 23rd at 7.30. We will do a 93-94 budget overview and also the middle school 5-8 budget. On Thursday, February 25th at 7.30 p.m., we will do the Pond Cove K-4 budget. Tuesday, March 2nd at 7.30 p.m., we will do district-wide accounts and the high school. And on Thursday, March 4th at 7.30 p.m., an overview of the general budget and community services. Our next scheduled regular meeting will be on March 9th, at which time we will um, adopt the 1993-94 budget adoption. The next policy subcommittee meeting is Wednesday, March 3rd, 1993 at 9.30 a.m. in the superintendent's office. And the finance subcommittee will meet at 6.30 p.m. Tuesday, March 9th at 9th in the superintendent's conference room, followed by the regular school board meeting. I now entertain a motion by consideration of request by the superintendent to enter executive session for the purpose of discussing a personnel matter. Mark. I move, I move we enter executive <laughs> session to discuss a personnel matter. A second. Peter. Peter. Any further discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. Thank you very much.